Amen. Let the church say amen. This morning I have the privilege of bringing to you the, the speaker for the day, for this morning, in the presence of our own Reverend Charles Willis. So we pray and ask that you, for your prayerful attention, and also that you would pray with him. Reverend Willis. Eternal God, our Father, we ask for a filling of thy Holy Spirit. Fill us, O oh Lord, so that we may deliver a word of truth. In the name of Jesus, I ask it and pray. Amen. May we stand. Yes. 
giving honor to our earthly shepherd, Reverend Bonner, for this opportunity to speak the word, to preach God's word to his people. The message is taken from John, second chapter, one through four. Would you stand, please? Reading of God's word, out of reverence for him. And on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Verse 3. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. And Jesus said unto the to her, what has that to do with me? His mother said unto the servants, Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now there was a marriage feast in Cana. You may be seated. About eight miles northeast of the city of Nazareth, we now have the location. The place is where Jesus performed his first miracle. Jesus being popular with the people, he and his family and disciples were invited. Another word for call. The wedding feast ensued naturally. Food and wine were served, dancing. The wine is about to get low in the skin, the jar. The request is made by the governor to the servants. They come to Mary, not Jesus. They, the servants, request more wine to serve the guests. Mary's request of her son saying, they have no wine. Jesus replied, woman? What have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Let's paraphrase this sentence, this remark. And it reads like this, or on this wise. Madam, that concerns you, not me. My hour has not yet come. Jesus replied to his mother, is not disrespect. Woman in that day, being a common form of addressing females. On the cross, Jesus addresses his mother in the same manner. Woman, behold thy son. Verse 5. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he tells you to do, do it for the believers. Whatever God in Christ commands us to do, we obey. The key word here is obedience. To obey him is to love him. And out of this love that is within us, we are to love one another. Jesus said, how will men know that you are my disciple? It is because we love the brethren. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Perish here is to mean to be lost. It is not God's will that any man should perish but have everlasting life. 
3.32. Everlasting life is not only future hope, but the present possession of everyone who believes in Christ. Now the request is for six water pots to be filled with a brim. Now the water pots are used for the purification of the Jews, containing two to three firkins each. Liquid measures tells us that one firkin is equal to about nine gallons. So each may hold 18 gallons or 27. Jesus commands the servants to fill the pots, draw out now, and bear unto the governor. So they did. And when the governor had tasted the water that was made into wine, he marveled and stated, he didn't know from whence it came. What we have here is the first miracle of Jesus' public ministry performed at the wedding feast of Cain. Now the servants know what had taken place. When Jesus commanded the servants to draw out now, they would have tasted or sampled the wine before taking it to the governor. The governor, after he had tasted the new wine, he called the bridegroom, the husband-to-be, and said unto him, At the beginning of the feast, and when men have drunken their fill. What is inferred here is that when the guests have drunken all, to them, old wine, new wine, wine turned to water, from water to wine, made no difference. But the governor complimented the bridegroom for serving the best for last by saying, Thou hast kept the good wine until now. This picture of Jesus turning water into wine is symbolic for us. For we are the used water pot. In this, in this life, we are filled with plain water, which has no taste, no flavor, but good for thirst has no kept. We as the water pots are filled with this new wine, symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to dwell in the temporal body, these pots, at the very time we came to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, the new wine, is the new creation being born again in used water pots. In our academic nature, we did as we pleased. That is conforming to the world. We walk with pride, not fearing God at all, believing that we could do all we wanted to do, and God would still do nothing about it. Matter of truth, some of us at one time really believe we're all not sinners. We're good people. And God will not judge good, good loving, caring people. For all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Be assured, my friends, brothers and sisters, judgment will come. In the eyes of the unbeliever, the ungodly and the unsaved and the unchurched believe it's all fallacy. God has breathed his Holy Spirit into the nostrils of those whom he died for, the used water pot. This new wine, filled to the brim, sealed us to the day of the Lord. The Bible tells us Greater is he that is in us than he that is saved in the world. 
the Holy Spirit entered our soul to guide us, to teach us, to comfort us. For he is the paracletos in the Greek. Keeper of our soul. One who comes alongside to keep steady our feet as we walk in this world. Proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Witnessing and testifying to the goodness of God. To lead us unto salvation. After the Jewish wedding feast was over, Jesus and his family, in other words, the brethren, and the disciples departed for Jerusalem. The Passover feast was at hand. Verse 7, and it says that his disciples believed on him. The dregs in this water pot, the temporal body, is being molded fashion to the image of his son. 21. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, so send I you. 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on him. And he said to them, the Holy Ghost. Let me take it back a minute. After God had fashioned Adam in the garden and picture a form in the dust of the earth, it won't move. It's just there. Then God breathed the breath of life in the Adam's nostril, and it came all the way down to us. And God can take it back just like that. But he breathed on us. Like when I was called, he breathed the Holy Spirit. Open your spiritual eyes. The physical eyes are okay. But the spiritual eyes, you start to see things are different. God's way. That is humility. And when we come to him, we have to submit, be humble. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Last question. Has Jesus breathed on you? Have your water pot been filled to the brim with the indwelling of the Holy Ghost? Are you filled with this new wine? Jesus said, Taste of me, taste this new wine, for I am sweeter than the honeybee. Honey. Jesus give living water to those who thirst after righteousness. New wine, new water, never to thirst again. Example, the woman at Jacob's well. He said, give me to drink. She said to him, you don't have anything to drink. Uh, drink with. He implied the dipper. He said to come. And he said to her, this water that I give to you will never thirst again. Thank you, Father, for this new water that I drank a long time ago. It's there. For the fountain of love, it's there. It's there. Use water pot is a type of a person's life. You start out with poor. I'm sorry, not poor. Empty. But when you come to know Jesus, you drink from his fountain. It goes all the way up. Filled to the brim, you're sealed. You cannot get unsealed. Either you're sealed or you're not. 
en dit mismo año, en Vale Catehol School, that will fill you up, to stay with you, for all eternity. Once the Spirit has created, it lasts for all eternity. God has a time, but time's going to disappear in Revelation. Time will be no more. Eternity comes to an end. Let me see. One more. Who reserved the living water from Christ himself? I say to you, the living water that is in all believers will never dry up. Unbelievers do not possess this living water. The well of living water is deep in our soul, filled to the brim unto the day of the Lord. We will never thirst again. This fountain of love will fill your water pot. As we look back to Calvary, to that place called the skull on his heel, we see our Lord as he struggles under the heavy weight of that old rugged cross. Let me pause here. The execution team is already in place. They have dug the hole. The main stake is in. The cross that Jesus buried is the cross beam. He's strapped with that with leather thongs. It weighs about 100 pounds. This is the cross he's taken to the hill. He's laid down. And a time to drive the stake through. Every pounding blow of those six inch Roman stakes is for us. Picture in your mind, here's an innocent man. He's placed between, he's lifted up, he's placed between two criminals who are about to get their just reward for the criminal acts that they have done. Our Lord is innocent. No record of criminal activity. We know him going about doing good to overcome evil, healing the sick, the blind to see, and the lame to walk. He is on his way to the cross. There is one Simon, a black man, who is conscripted from the crowd to help Jesus bear the cross. The Bible tells us, don't tell us, how long or how far Simon bear the cross. But we know that Simon was from Cyrenica, the country. In present day, Cyrenica is Libya on the northern coast of Africa. Simon, a black man, so if you hear someone say that we have no part in the scripture, that is not true. We have a great part in the scripture, and we can find it. There he will be lifted up in all his humility, his nakedness, some artists paint him with a, a cloth around his midsection, but the real truth is he was naked. But you could see the stripes and the places where they had heard him bear. The eyes of evil men and women gazed upon his nakedness. This same crowd just the other day had shouted his welcome entry into Jerusalem on the coast. It behooves us to see an innocent man being crucified like a common criminal between two thieves who was placed. This one on the right, nevertheless, Jesus stopped dying for a moment. 
We listen, Father. We say it to him. He says to all of us, This day thou should be with me in paradise. That's to all of us. One went the other way, past the outer darkness, and the other one was with the Lord. Christ must pay with his sacrificial atoning death on the cross. According to God's plan and purpose, Christ must shed his precious blood for the remission of sin for all of us, once and for all. In the Old Testament, they would elect a priest for a period of time, about a year, who would serve the temple. This priest, Jesus Christ, after the order of Melchizedek, would serve. There would be no end to his priesthood. So we, once we come into God's family, we are considered a royal priesthood. Each one of us. Because we bear his mark in our soul. He did it for us. He didn't have to do it. But that was God's plan. That he paid a price for us. So we are bought with a price. A ransom for many. He had no sin. Don't let skeptics tell you that he is a sinner. He is not a sinner. Never will be. But he took our sins upon him and shed his precious blood. Stuck him in his side. Blood and water. Water for baptism. Precious blood for removal of all of our sins past, present, and future. We don't have to worry about it. We are sure those mansions, they're waiting for the occupants. That's full. Yes. We'll get there. We'll be waiting for it. And once we get there, we are going to a wedding. The wedding feast of the Lamb. And we are going to sup with him all eternity. He's going to teach us and tell us things that the, the minds cannot conceive. And we're going to suck with him. That's very pleasant. He becomes the Passover meal. This is just a prelude. When we do first Sunday, prelude. That's getting ready for the real thing. When he was with his disciples Thursday evening, that was a test. That was an example how it's going to be when we do it on the heavenly side with his disciples. And you'll notice that when Satan had showed up, he told him, go and do what you have to do, but you got to get out of here. Because this is holy stuff. This is holy. So uh, the presence of Satan had to leave. And then they went on with the evening meal. Last night. So we say to you, has your water pot sprung a leak, a little crack in it. If so, that means it's got to be fixed, right? Got to fill it back up with the Spirit. So if you have confessed Christ and went back into the world, like so many of us, myself, we're going to play around a little while, and then we're going to run back when we get in trouble. That's the very time that folks, like me, when you get in trouble, oh, Lord, save me, help me. I'm not, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> Liar. 
but we deceive ourselves. A week later, we're right back where we started. Because Satan is very strong in his temptation. He cannot hurt you. He cannot do anything to you on a physical level. But he can attack your spirit and create doubt. That's what he wants to do. Just like when he tried to talk to Jesus about having Jesus to make a decision without God or on his own. That's how he get us. That's how he get us. So if Satan is bold enough to challenge, to tempt our God, he was just in his flesh. Three times he answered him after he was baptized. Three times Satan tried to get him. He said, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all these kingdoms. To us, he says, if you bow down to me, I'm going to give you all this good stuff. Materialism, that's what it is. And a lot of us fall for it. Believe it's going to happen. But here's an example I've seen over and over. The movie stars, the celebrities, they make a good record and make a lot of money. And it seems like they go up here. And then they stroke out, heart attack, and then they start to come down. And then they're the only time seen. Another one take their place. Here we go again. The glitter, the glamour, the worldly stuff gets us every time. Now for the true sanctified child of God. You cannot live that way. You're going to have to go back. And he's standing there with open arms. Sheep, come back home. Come back to the one who loves you. And will bind up your wounds. No matter what you have done. He'll take you back. Some of us slip through the fence. He's standing at the gate. Picture the sheepfold. Go away, play around a little bit. And when he get bad, here I come. Come back, sheep. Come back, sheep. The Lord loves you. Come back to your sisters and brothers. He didn't, though. Scripture tells us just that one, if you'll leave the 99, that's how precious we are to Father God. Back to the water pot. If it's cracked, leaking a little bit, show up your faith. Call on Jesus. Come back. That crack in the water pot is leaking out your faith. Trust, come back home. Here is Jesus. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Come on, let us give the Lord a hand praise.